So it's time for our uh, usual weekly League of Ireland chat. And this week joining us is former Harps captain, former Harps goalkeeper, uh, Gavin Cullen. Gavin, good to see you again. Good to talk to you. Hi, Ashin. Good afternoon. How's things? Uh, they're good, Gavin. Uh, looking forward to another busy weekend on the on the League of Ireland front, particularly for Fun Harps. Uh, one point above the bottom two. It was looking so bright several weeks ago, but uh, it's amazing what one defeat and how things can pan out. How much pressure is there is there now on Harps going into this game against Sligo on Saturday? Do you feel, Gavin? Yeah, there's there's big pressure on the minute. Um, the next five or six games are, are, are all massive games. They're, they're all cup finals for them. Um, it's amazing with the run of results Harps have that they're still down there, but it's coincided with Waterford having a run of results and Dundalk having a run of results. So um, the, the three fairly formed teams within the league are, are in that bottom four. So look, it's, it's, it's added pressure, which I suppose from from the from the results of Harps had, they thought they maybe would have got out of it. And there was even talk at one stage of pushing on up the league because of these results. It's, it's such a tight league this season that, that, that anybody can get sucked in at this point. Yeah, and it's amazing too that you could have what forty two points and you could still be sitting second bottom on the table again. It is. It is. Look, you go right up to to Bowes and Derry. Like Derry are Derry are fourth in the league and forty five points, and and Harps are only Harps are only eight points behind Derry. Mm. You know, I, I know eight points is a lot of making up, but it's a very very tight league. It's as tight a league as I've seen in a long long time. Yeah, and obviously every game now is is bringing huge pressure. Harps boss Ollie Horgan was, of course, uh, disappointed with with how it panned out last week in relation to the defeat to Waterford. And he mm. admitted that, that for a change, the performance just wasn't at what they was expected of the boys. It wasn't. I watched the game. Um, they, they didn't look like themselves. They, didn't, they, they made slight so mistakes for goals, but they didn't look as, as sharp or as hungry as they had in recent weeks, especially the, the Dundalk game at home and, and other, other performances. Looked, they looked really good. Um, so it's one one of them, and hopefully it's just a blip in the p- performance, and it's not just a, a, a it's not going to run on to this week or the week after as well. Yeah, how big a boost is it then that Ethan Boyle, uh, Sean Boyd, and Ryan Connolly are all back after after suspension because they were missed last week, so they were. Well, they were like, but I think the players that came in and and. and Though it should should have been able to do and, and come in and, and get a result against Waterford, um, they're not like as I say. It's great to have all the players and squad available, but at the same time, I don't think I think Barry McNamee was probably a bigger loss than any of the three yeah. being injured last week. But at the same time, like they're, they'll be glad to get bodies back, so they have they have opportunities to change the team if, if required. Yeah, there's no indication yet that, that Barry McNamee is going to be available f- for this week. Uh, we're hoping that he is. Mm. But in relation to him, is is he going to be a vital player against a side like Sligo Rovers? Yeah, he is because, look, Barry can, as we've seen against Dundalk at home, he can pick a pass and create a goal. He can, he can dictate the game, though the tempo of the game sometimes get his foot on it, which probably harps don't have a lot of players like him. And uh, he's very he's very good at that. So obviously, if he's available and hopefully he is, no, he he will come in the ring and probably will start the game. Yeah, is there going to be many goals in this tie? Uh, because Sligo haven't conceded too many. They've got an an excellent uh, record, so they do. And mm-hmm. in relation to conceding goals, it's, it's the sort of game could be just a one nil or a two one. Is it, Gavin? Uh, you won't know. Yeah, Sligo have been excellent. I think Bayer Sham Grovers, they've been they've been the best this season defensively. Um and they've been good. They they've had a blip after the mid season break and they've dropped a lot of points. So they've sort of fell away in terms of a title shot, but they're still third in the league and they've got a good team, good squad. Um he, he, any game Hurst played them has been up and tuck and there's been very little. I think the last game of Fun Park. I think Sligo won, but I think a lot of that was down to Ed McGinty's performance that night. So um, it will be tight. You can't see a lot of goals, but then you never know. Yeah, and in relation to being in this situation before, Harps have lots of experience, of course, fighting it out in, in the bottom mm-hmm. places and in, in the Premier Division and, and staying up. The fact that Ollie Horgan's been around the block such a long time, um, does that maybe give Harps an advantage now going into the final six games of the season, four which are at home, that they've been in this scenario so many times before, Gavin. Oh yeah, look, you can't buy experience at at whatever level it is. Um, in terms of and even to and one on things or relegation battles or no what it takes. And and Ollie's been the master of it. There's no two ways about it. He's been he's kept harps up in 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 recent years where nobody gave him a chance. But this year, things a wee bit different. I think the quality in the squads a wee bit different. I think the 
the, the they expect to stay up, but I think there's not as much talk about relegation, which is which is good. But at the same time, there's still there there thereabouts. But I, I, look, I believe whether it's Dundalk, Harp, Strahda, or Waterford going into the playoffs, I think they should have all too much for any of the first division clubs coming up this time. Yeah, two big games at home next for Harps. Obviously, they've got Sligo Rovers on Saturday. You mentioned the club there, Drogheda. They're coming on uh, the Monday, the 1st of, of November. So mm. if you could conjure up six points out of those two matches, there'd be a huge six points, Gavin. Oh, it'd be absolutely massive, so it would. Uh, I think you would nearly say that that, that would be... It won't, probably wouldn't be enough in terms of points on the board, but it would be enough in terms of, of mentality and pushing on for the rest of the season to, to keep them up there, you know? So it's a huge two weeks. Yeah, massive two weeks um, for Harps. And I suppose the fact as well that Waterford are in cup action this weekend, Gavin, if Harps do get a result, it's, it's thrown the, the pressure back on, on the men from the south of the country again, so it is. Yeah, obviously Waterford are in the semi-final and they'll be glad to be there. But at the same time, if they end up at the weekend out of the cup and, and Harps four points or five points ahead of them, um, like it's, it's it looks like a lot to catch up then for Waterford, so it'll be a big mental swing as well. So, obviously, if Harps get the three points this week, it'll be it'll, it'll look more difficult the task for Waterford in the running. Yeah, uh, the other game on Saturday, Shamrock Rovers against Longford Town. You would expect Rovers to have no issues against Longford, but we said that before, so we did Gavin. And for some reason, Longford can put in their best shifts of the season against the, the champions, so they can. And they've, they've home advantage at Bishop's Gate too. Yeah, look, Longford have, have really, I suppose, playing out of season. So there's no pressure, there's no uh, on them, there's no, there's no in terms of results and things like that. So players will be playing for contacts, players will be looking to get seen by other clubs. So they might be putting in individual performances better. But at the same time, Sham Growers are two ones away from one in the league. So you would expect them to want to get it wrapped up as quick as possible. And I would fully expect the three points there on Saturday. Yeah, it's not very often that Derry City would be looking for favours off their neighbours Harps, Gavin, but this weekend they would because uh, if they mm. beat Sligo and Derry won, Derry have been thrust into that European spot, so there. Yeah, D- Derry will go third in the table then if that happens, um, which would be a phenomenal turnaround from earlier on the season. And hats off to, to everybody at Derry for doing that. They, 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 they definitely look good. They look the part. They're, they're working really hard and... and you, you, look, you can't see in terms of form, you can see them passing Sligo in the run and, and end up finishing third as well. Yeah, uh, but it was a great one for them last week against Pats. So it was against the sides at the second and uh, and the table. So it was brilliant one. Um, as I say, they, they've been they've been a breath of fresh air since the, the Rory Higgins taken over, and there's there's a real positivity about the place and about the club. We played their their reserve team a couple of times there, and and you can tell, and you can tell there's a. They're under age teams and under 19s have qualified for the cup final and they're doing really well. And you can tell, obviously, with the investment from Philip Bedardi that, that, that there's there's progress being made and things are looking good for Derry at the minute. Yeah. Um, just maybe coming away from, from the League of Ireland in a second, you mentioned Derry City's on, under 19s and uh, you say that they're competitive, that, that they've got a good side there. Uh, what's your thoughts been so far in the, in the opening Ulster Senior League season, Gavin? You guys, of course, sitting... Top of the table, what four ones from three of them, of them right and saying twelve points uh, at, at the top, and he's have a bit of a break this weekend. So, yeah. uh, what's what's your thoughts on on how the league has panned out in the early stages? It's been it's been very competitive. The games we've uh, the games have been very tight and very good. A lot of goals, a lot of good quality, and so um, I, it's it's going to be a tough league this year. Like we've played seven games in cups and leagues so far, and each one of the games have drawn different tests. Like as I said about Harps and Derry, have been have been excellent against us. Um, we the only side we haven't played yet is Bonaghi, which was supposed to be played this weekend, but it's called off. So look, we're 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 happy with the way things going for ourselves. But in terms of the standard in the league, it's been, it has been very very good. There's yeah, and good. with the addition of Monaghan, of course, this year it seems to be yeah. that the that the guys from outside of Donegal are settling in okay, Gavin. So there they have. They've had some good results. They they, they beat Van Herbst and they've beat Letter Kenny. Um, they've lost to us in Bonaghi, so it's been a mixed bag for them. But I spoke to their manager before and after our game, and and they said, look, they've a bit to go and and they learn, but no, they know. That hopefully, in a couple of years' time, they can compete with the likes of ourselves and and all. But I don't think they're that far away. I think they've got the nucleus of some good players there. It's just in a new league, you know, and and it's good to see. I, th- I think we're down in in Monaghan in two weeks' time, so 
that'll be again a different test for us as well. Yeah. When is that Cockhill Bonnegie game going to be played? Because that's probably the big game so far this season, given that the two years are holding the top two positions. I think that's fairly early to say that. Um, look, we've had a couple of, some big games against Letter County so far. As I say, Harps and Derry have been more than good against us, and, and, and we're both unlucky not to get results against us. So, look, they're, they're all big games. Um, the, it's very early in the season to say, well, look, that's the top two, and that's the way it's going to be because. It's it, it's it's there's only four games played, so there's a long way to go. Like we treat every game with the respect and and and, and each week. So I'm and I don't think we play Bonaghi until until December, but I could be wrong. But I think that's that's when it is, you know. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back um, to teams playing at the national level. Cup semi-finals this weekend. Pats against Dundalk. Bows against Waterford. Just find your thoughts on those two. How they're going to go, Gavin? Yeah. Look, cups and. Uh, semi-final stage they, they could go absolutely anyway um the four teams are in it they're all in fairly good form no they're all fairly consistent form like if, if you're thinking on paper you would say bows to beat waterford and and, and and pats to beat dundalk but i don't think so dundalk have a brilliant record in the cup and i suppose it, it's, it's they're not probably going to qualify for europe any other way but the cup so i'd say all their eggs in one basket i'd probably go for dundalk and i'll go for bows to get yeah. the yeah. If Waterford was to pull it off, is that a good enough distraction for Harps then at the bottom end of the table? So does it, it, it could take the focus of Waterford maybe in the run? Um, yes and no. We've seen it before, I suppose, in, in England and, and teams in the League of Ireland. They got the cup finals and end up getting struggled. Their season sort of petered off in the league. But look, staying up is the most important thing for any club. Um, if they get the cup final, it actually might get the, give them a lift and a belief for some of their games going on. So... I, w- I would disagree that it'll take their eye off the ball, to be honest. I think I think they would take more belief out of it than anything. Okay. Uh, listen, Gavin, good to talk to you. And uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Enjoy the football at the weekend. No ball, Thank you. Bye.